in his song, Lucky Number 13, The Hurt Business Podcast, episode 13, with your host, CP, Chris Parker, and JB James Bowers. Already? Uh, yeah, tune in, tune in, tune in, like you already are. And uh, you can find us on all platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Pandora. Tune in at Alexa Podcast, Addict Pod, Chaser, Deezer, Listen Notes, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, and Cast Box. Anything with a cast, anything with a podcast, you can find the Hurt Business Podcast with CP and JB, JB and CP, however you want to put it. We in here. Once again, follow us on Facebook at thelockerroom.com. Follow our YouTube, subscribe, The Locker Room. Follow Pugilism Company, where our man is putting up the episodes with salacious topics. You know what I'm saying? Hey. He just getting you in there. He bring you in. He bring you. He bring your eyes and ears to the podcast, and we appreciate him. So subscribe, like, comment, and let us know what you're thinking, guys. You know what I'm saying? JB, how you doing? Man, I'm chilling, baby. Man, we got some weather coming out here. Uh, again? Yeah, some bullshit, bro. They were talking about it was gonna be a whole bunch of rain and shit. Man, I ain't seen no rain. I seen a little bit, not much though. I tell you, you know what, what I mean. With it no tropical storm little, type. It of don't weather. take but a little bit. Houston will flood in a minute. True. True. You're right about you know that one. Saying? But it's been raining since last night, bro. Like off and on. Man, it ain't gonna be too much going on. Same shit they said about the hurricane was coming, and that, that hurricane didn't even come this way. Take precautions. Take yeah. precautions. Oh, hey, better safe than sorry. You right. You know what I'm saying? If I'd rather be means, saying that it ain't coming. I'd right. Be if you got the coming. means to leave, leave. The people who got caught in Katrina, they couldn't leave, you know? Yeah. Impoverished areas. So if you blessed, stay blessed. Mm-hmm. So we jumping into it, man. This week, hey, action-packed weekend in boxing, bro. Yep. Pedraza took care of business like we thought he would against Molina. Unanim- unanimous decision. And he's looking for a title shot. Yeah. I don't know, man. I He looked good. He did. He looked good at 140, bro. So the only thing is, is what is there for him to do that'll put him in a, that'll give him what he want? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to think when they kept talking about, bro, the fight wasn't even over with. Mm-hmm. The fight wasn't even over with before they started talking about he want a title shot, he want to be in this, he want to do that, and all this shit. And I'm just like, bro, I mean. Let him do what he wants to do. But you know what I want to see? If Pedraza can successfully move up to 140, attain a title or compete and be competitive against mm-hmm. a title holder at 140, that bodes very well for the superstar Tank David. True. You know what I'm saying? True. Yeah. yeah. Tank took care of him in the lower weights. So that means he can tra- He can move up and his power, his skill can translate to the 140-pound division because he handled Pedraza with ease. You yeah. Know what I'm I mean, he really so did. If, if Pedraza's successful in his uh, foray into the 140-pound division, then we will definitely see Tank Davis go up even further. It it, it 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 really uh is a good sign for him. Yeah, but at 140 right now on the ESPN junior welterweight list, top 10 list, right? You got Jose Ramirez, number one, Josh Taylor, number two, Regis Prograde, number three, Maurice Hooker, number four, Victor Postal, number five, Jose Cepeda, number six. Hey, stop right I, there. Them top five right there. That is the list. That's the road to the Hall of Fame for Javante Davis. And the road that all those five are pay-per-view fights. Yep. All of that's, them. That's that's how he becomes the mega star right there. Once he makes that leap, scratch that. Once he beats Leo Santa Cruz, he's got to keep the momentum going. That's when you start to search out the Lomachenkos. Now it's not yeah. time to wait anymore. You go with Lomachenko, you put together another mega event. Then if you step on up, 
and you start knocking off those guys and he reaches close to Mayweather level. I don't, I hate to use that, but he's got, he's, he's one of those guys that has that potential. If I hate this, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Floyd seems like the type of guy he might not want somebody to pass him. Yeah, he do, don't know. He do, he do give off that vibe, bro. He give so off that vibe. He, he might not lead him in, a, in, in the correct direction. Mm-hmm. But Javante Davis can make a lot of money for a lot of people, Mayweather included. So maybe the bag yeah. is bigger than the legacy. Hopefully the bag is bigger than the legacy. Man, uh, Timothy Bradley said that in that list, you know, the bottom half of it, the bottom half of that list is not necessarily that great. But they said, Timothy Bradley said that in that, in, out of that list, that Pedraza earned himself, you know, to be in the top 10. And right now, the 10th person on this list is Robert Easter Jr. You know what I'm saying? So Robert Easter Jr. is an adequate fighter. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't even seem like he's that much into boxing anymore. He has a future as a comedian. Uh, He should probably go that route. He really hurt himself by not using the the tools that God gave him. Yeah. If we want to talk about Robert Easton Jr. He's a tall guy for any weight class, all the way up to 154 pounds. Mm -hmm. But he, 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 he... he relegates himself to fighting inside, getting in yeah. dog fights with guys that he doesn't have to do if he would just use his length, use the jab, work off the jab, and make fights easy for himself. He was given the tools to be a special fighter, but he's one of those guys who just he, he doesn't he, I mean, sometimes being willing unafraid to mix it up can hinder you in the long run. You know what I'm saying? It can come in handy when you're forced to fight inside, but he doesn't have to be forced. Mm -hmm. He looks to fight. He leans in. He initiates the inside fighting when he could very easily just pick people apart. Yeah. From the outside, I mean, he could. Right. He got this. He got all the. He have all of the the tools. He got everything he needs to be able to be that kind of fighter. But I don't know why he puts himself in them situations where he try to turn into everything into a dog fight. You remember when he fought? You remember when he fought Comey? Yes, I do. It was the same kind of situation. I was always. I was saying from the longest. I was like, bro, why don't he just fight from the outside? Keep him away from him. Comey obviously had way more power than him. It turned out to be a, a instant classic, you know, but. That wasn't the fight that oh, I would have yeah. fought, though. I wouldn't have fought he that make, style. He, he, he makes for great fights, exciting yeah. fights. But it doesn't lend itself to longevity. No. It doesn't lend itself to uh, making yourself a pound-for-pound pound type guy, mm-hmm. which at one point I was very high on Robert Easter Jr. Simply looking at his statistics, his, uh, his measurables, yeah. reach, height, you know, speed, et cetera. Like, yeah. and the weight class that he was in, like he could have really been something special. But you know, hey, some guy's temperament just gets the better of him. And, uh, you know, I'm not knocking him for it because it's admirable mm-hmm. that he gets in there and does what he does. I'm just saying, guided a little bit better, kind of uh led in the right way. He could have he could have ma- he could have done more with what he had. Yeah, and he could have maxed out his uh his potential too, bro. I don't think he just he didn't capitalize on the opportunity. He didn't. Did you see the um Eric Lubin and Gauche fight? Yes I did. All yes, right, did. well well, I, I want to say this real quick too. You remember when we was talking about either one, the winner of this fight wouldn't go. We didn't believe that that winner would go straight to a Charlo, a Charlo fight. Yeah, hold, like hold it. Going that hold, way. Hold, hold, hold it. We said they shouldn't. Yeah, well, not. I mean, we knew the fight was like 
an eliminator. Kind of a, yeah, eliminator. So they have, mm -hmm. would have the opportunity, but it's in their best interest, whoever won, to fight again against somebody and sharpen up and step up and do what they have to do. But if they want to, you know what I'm saying, take the opportunity, it's there. And we knew mm -hmm. it would be there. It's just the fact that we didn't think it was the best idea. Yeah. And now they saying Lubin is going to probably end up going straight to the winner of Charlo Rosario. I think that shit would be suicide. You already didn't got Hawks smashed by him one time. You're going to walk yourself. You, I haven't seen any progression from before he got knocked out and after he got knocked out. Uh, now, the one progression is this. It was good for him to get in there and get his chin tested against a, a credible opponent, a, 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 a good competition. So, no. Uh, in the tenth round, saying. in the tenth yes. round, Goshe did hurt him, but he recovered from it well. That's what I was. That's what I was walking right into. That's what, what I'm, I'm talking saying. About. Yeah, no. Yeah. What I'm saying is, you can look at it one of two ways. Like he got his chin tested, and he came through. He persevered. The fight didn't even start. Like it, they were. It was like eight fill out rounds. It got started in the eighth round. Mm -hmm. Goshe hurt him. Then toward the end, he ended up, he could, he almost took Goshe out of there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, you got knocked out by Charlo. Charlo is the ultimate test to test your chin. That shit didn't hold up, right? And then you let Goshe test your shit again. I mean, Goshe don't have the power that Charlo have. But if, if Goshe is able to clip you the way he did in that round, I can almost guarantee you, bro, as soon as Charlo touch him, it's night, night. Grab a pillar, tuck him in, Al Heyman, line another one up. I'll counter with this. You can get caught by anybody, okay? I feel you on that. I feel you on but that. But the fact that he was able to take the shot, go through being hurt again, that feeling that he felt against Charlo, mm -hmm. fight through it, come mm -hmm. back to hurt the guy, it shows progression it shows growth you know what i'm saying and you we can we can speculate that charlo would take him out but he may be on higher alert against charlo than he than he was against goshe simply because of the fact that he knows charlo's a bigger puncher so we we might see him fight like the first 8 rounds where he won rounds but minimize the risk. You see what I'm and, saying? And I think in the first fight with Charlo, in the fight with Charlo, he was fighting on emotion. There was a lot of trash talk leading up to that fight. Mm -hmm. And it took him out of his game. You got to factor that in into the equation. So yeah. maybe he comes in this time smarter. He comes in more experienced. And he he minimizes the open opportunities that he gives Charlo. He takes he takes risks, but at the at the opportune time. That's what good boxers. That's what most great boxers are good at. They're good at knowing when they can take that risk when you're not expecting it, when you're not ready to counter, and they leap in, boom, 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 get their get their stuff off, and get out. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it from that perspective. If he goes straight to him, I mean, he's a threat. He's got skills. You know what I'm saying? He he wasn't built up like that for nothing. Like he was undefeated. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Charlo he's only lost different. he's only lost one time, and that's to Jamel Charlo. And whether you lose by knockout or you or you go to the distance, a loss is a loss. And losing to Jamel Charlo is not a death sentence. It shouldn't be. He's a great fighter. Twice, but if you lose twice, it is. If you do, but if you believe in yourself, hey, at some point, fuck. True. I don't know. I just think I think Mel. I just think Mel too much for him. I think Mel too much for a lot of them dudes at uh 154, bro. I think Mel, I think Mel is the best 154 pound in the world. But if you're his mandatory, you gotta fight him at some point. 
If yeah. he fights him, if he if he looks better, if they go the distance, he 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 learns from that. He he gains from that. Actually, he mm. shows that he learned from his defeat. He won't make it past six rounds. So if he gets knocked out again, then hey, yeah, he won't make it past six rounds. So you mm. saying he okay? Well, oh yeah, he's gonna get Hawk smashed. I feel it in my bones. I just he's feel it in get, my bones. He's going to get his turkey smoked. Oh, yeah, turkey smoked. Turkey smoked, basted it on Thanksgiving. Out of there. Oh, Roasted. Oh, yeah, man. I just think, man, like, you know how you got certain fighters, they make up just seems, it, it's they, they, they style is a lot more aggressive and a lot more put together. Mel is a lot more aggressive and he a lot more put together, man, and he just... To me, he just seemed like he got him. He got these dudes beat just by style, like the way he fight. Lubin seemed a lot. Of, he looked. He seemed fragile to me, bro. Just like Rosario. I like Rosario. Don't get me wrong. I like what he did against J Rock and shit like that, bro. But I mean, he talking. It's gonna be a war. It's gonna be this. It's gonna be that. Man, it ain't gonna be none of that shit. He gonna get his ass in that ring. Come Saturday night, mm-hmm. and Mel is gonna proceed to give him the most electrifying ass whipping that we done seen all year, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh. It's just, it's just how fight. I think certain, certain fighters can, certain fighters just can stack up against certain people. And I just think those two people, Lubin being one that might come up after the Rosario whooping, those two fighters, and they just can't do nothing with them. You know what I mean? Did you see about, did you see Devin Haney might be, well, not might be. That, they, that might be a fight that everybody kind of is leaning toward him fighting Gamboa. Yeah, but, 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 but let's not move past that Lubin card. Because although Lubin and Gauche was the main event, that was a man who stole the show. Ennis. Jaron Boots Ennis. Yeah. Yeah, put on a clinic. All right. Yeah, you're right. He got he he got him some work in. You know what I'm saying. The first four rounds, he was gliding around the ring. You know, just showing you that he was levels above his opponent before stopping him in the sixth convincingly. And uh, Abreu is no slouch. Nah, although he's not a contender at this point, but. Uh, Jaron Ennis has now stopped 16 straight opponents. He's got yeah. the classic Philly beard. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's very flashy in typical Philadelphia fashion. Mm-hmm. You know, with the fur and whatnot. Hey, he's looking well, like you- he's ready. He's looking like he's ready to step up. Yeah, that's what I'm about to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to see him against some uh, top 10 type opponents mm-hmm. before we can say he's a title contender, a yeah. title uh, yeah, challenger. But uh, I like what I saw. I like the counter ability. I like how he rolls with the punches and comes back. He's got all the tools, man, all the tools. But mm-hmm. we, don't need to, we don't need to get too too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, we've seen this before. I've seen a lot of prospects that I was impressed by. Um, most notably, Amiri Mom. You know, I liked him at first. And yeah. He ran, he ran up against a guy that applied that pressure, man. Yeah, yeah. It was too much for him. But hopefully, Boots. And he was Ennis, on a ride. He was on yeah, a ride, he too. Was, he I remember was, that. He was. He was, man. I, I was real high on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. So let's see where this goes with him. But I didn't want to let that moment pass and we not mention Jaron mm. Boots Ennis. Yeah. Another thing, too. I ran across something I read about him when uh when, when the fight was going on. Basically, an article said, I'm just going to be a little piece of it. It says, unfortunately for him, because of his standing promotionally and politically, he may not have... He may not take a lengthy path to a title shot or leverage sanctioned bodies to force potential opponents' hands. Ennis is something of an independent entity on a Showtime roster. He's not affiliated with PBC. And as such, 
isn't mentioned in the inter internal welterweight showdown the company has pushed for years with names like Aero Spence, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, and others. So when I read that, it kind of made me think about even if he keep making noise and even if he keep, you know, on this ride, I think that he's going to have to end up probably picking a side at this point. Because and because all of the names that's going to get him where he needs to be is really with PBC and Showtime. You know what he'll, I'm saying? So he'll, 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 at, at, when it comes time, he'll do what he needs to do. A uh, deal will be made and he'll either sign for a fight with one of them with options or he'll just sign outright. You know what I'm saying? But the you don't think with move, the landscape? The, the best move would be for him to make a deal to fight that guy and give him an option on two or three fights. So mm, they'll, yeah. they'll have him for two or three more fights. So then he would be free to, at that point, if he did what he needed to do, he could go fight Crawford if he had to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You don't. That'd be smart. That'd be smart. Right. That'd be smart. But we know fighters don't always do the smart thing. They go for the yeah. sure money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because boxing, yeah. as we know, doesn't have a union. There's no retirement plan. So they got to maximize their earnings. So he'll probably sign a deal, sign his life away, and we'll see where that goes. I know, man. With him going, with him doing being 16 and 0, 16 knockouts or whatever his record is, like him not really having a, a promotional home is probably gonna hurt his ride. Right, now, now look, 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 look. The Jaron Enos is he's not 16 and 0. He stopped 16 straight opponents. He's 26 and 0. Boom, gotcha. Right. Okay. He's got 24 okay. knockouts, but you know, two of his opponents lasted the distance. But he's okay. 16, his last 16 fights, he's got him out of there. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. All right. Yeah, because I thought I knew it was something, but um, I just I just didn't know for sure. Did you see Did you see that, that Devin Haney and Eurokas Gamboa situation that was best brewing up? You were talking about that. We, I mean, I, look, we know, like, it's brewing, but... Facts have come out. Uh, my guy, Ma uh, Matchroom, Eddie Hearn. He's mm -hmm. he's 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 come out and told people that he's he was behind, willing to endorse the Haney Russell fight. So mm -hmm. after Russell proved that he wasn't really about that life, then Devin Haney has moved on and he's gone with Gamboa which is uh, the typical boxing route. You know, you find an yeah. older name that's been in some big fights. He's got a name. People know him, and you beat him. You beat him up. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what you do. So if he can't get Russell in the ring, that's a good opponent. Mm -hmm. it's, it's better than he's better than any opponent Devin Haney has faced thus far. Yeah. So, and they have a date for it. Right. So, I mean, hey, we'll see where that goes. It's not signed. Mm -hmm. It's not signed. So we'll see if, uh, but, but, but we should, let's get back to this. We need to start. These guys come out here, you run your mouth, you want to fight, you claim you want this, you want that, you call the people out and then they bring you a fight, and you find every little loophole, all types of stuff is wrong with the offer, this, that, the third. See, you, you, you're going out of your jurisdiction. It's not your job title. You feel me? You a fighter. If you want to mm. fight, you say you want to fight, and then you let the people handle that who handle that. You yeah. want to come out, you want to talk, you want to say this and that, and somebody called you bluff. Now, yeah. I really want to get, we need to get Bill Haney on here or Devin, and we really need to talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this got to cease. Selling these wolf tickets, man, I'm sick yeah. of it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't really, if you don't really want it, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, man, stay out the way, dog. Because I, I thought, I knew, I knew Gary Russell was on some whole shit. 
Nah, he was doing nah. Look, though, Russell, man, he's a fighter, dog. Baltimore, Maryland, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, D.C., that, that area, dog, he got it in him. Like, and he got skills. He's the longest reigning champion in boxing. But, dog, but you can still be, belt, first but you can still you could be you can still you know be all that shit and be a hoe. And I'm gonna tell you why he's a hoe, because if he was seriously about strong. making that's a, that's a, that's yeah. that's a strong word. No, no, it is because if you doing whole shit, that's what I'm saying, bro. I ain't making excuses for these motherfuckers no more. When you do whole shit, you deserve to be called out on it, right? So I feel like I feel like right now, you know, he did all that woof. He did all that woofing. He did all of that X, Y, and Z and, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You call, you're you chasing Terrence Crawford because you knew that fight wasn't, wasn't, really, wasn't, wasn't a realistic fight that could ever be made. We knew that from off the, off the gate. Then, because if, if, if it was that easy for him to make a fight with, with an Al Heyman fighter, meaning, you know, why would he fight Gary Russell shit when he can go fight somebody else? That's a more meaningful Terrence fight. Crawford. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Why would you, why, I knew that when, 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 um, when Gary Russell was talking all that shit uh, to Terrence Crawford, right? I knew that was just fucking talk. Because talk, talk that shit to Errol Spence, Keith Thurman, yeah, tell it, talking Andy to Garcia, him. Sean. But Porter. it's not just it's not just him talking, him talking and knowing that it was and everybody buying into it when everybody should have known if you know the politics of boxing that that fight wasn't ever gonna be made. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if it was so easy for Terrence Crawford to make a fight, like I said, with an Al Heyman PBC fighter, why would the why, why the fuck would he blow that opportunity to fight somebody like Gary Russell when he can go right over there and get what he wants, which is a title? Right. You know what I'm saying? So I knew that was some bullshit. That's an, that's another whole feather in his hat. Mm. Then you take that, you take that into account. And you see all of the shenanigans going around the Devin Haney and Bill Haney situation. That's another feather of wholeness in his hat. Because if you a boss, but everybody, if you calling yourself a boss and everybody know that you're not your own boss, because when you got on that portraying and claiming that you were your own boss, you confirmed that you had to bring the contract and the, well, the terms to your boss to let them tell you that, hey, man, this shit ain't 100. So stop acting like you make the decisions for yourself, bro, and just say, look, I want to fight you and let the people that make the fights, that pay you to do the fights, let them do the negotiating and handle the business. You set your, you set your terms, you set your price, you let the people that do it, do it. It seemed like to me he was doing a bunch of talking and then he started sabotaging his own motherfucking talk. You know, he started back, but he started backpedaling. But then, yeah, he, did you see the phone call? He, he muddied. He, he muddied the waters. Yeah, but he did it even further, man. Look, when B, you, you seen the phone call with him and Bill Haney? Didn't this, see that. Yeah, it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday, the day before. And Bill Haney explained to him and told him. He was just like, look, I'm going to give you the rundown of exactly how it happened, bro. He said, you talking all that shit about me sending you term sheets and this, that, and the third, bro. But I got out of the way. I ain't even take a, I, I wasn't even going to take a percentage. I introduced you to, to Eddie Hearn the other day, and I let y'all talk, and y'all couldn't come to terms. So don't make it seem like motherfuckers wasn't on board with certain shit and don't make it seem like that we just sent you a blank deal, bro. We didn't send you a blank deal. And that's when, um, you know, Gary Russell was saying some shit like, well, you know, everything just got all messed up because after I had that meeting with Eddie Hearn about fighting y'all, I didn't hear nothing back from y'all. And Bill Haney said some real shit that old gangsters say. Bro, I'm not a fucking female. If I brought you to the plug and y'all ain't come to terms, I was the middleman. Why in the fuck I need to talk to you? You understand what I'm saying? If y'all, if I, if if I can't, if y'all, if you couldn't agree with the with the plug, you damn sure not go agree with me. So I'm gonna but, let it be but, what it but, is. But but why couldn't he agree with the plug? Because then he already he, had. It. He brought some uh, more shit to the table, bro. Therefore, me saying it again. Number three, because everything he laid out at first was in the term sheet. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Bro, that's another, another, uh, number three, the third feather whole of feather. holiness in his hat. The third whole feather. 
Yeah, bro. So at the end of the day, you can't be around this motherfucker woofing, dog. I don't give a fuck who you is, bro. You can't be around here woofing, act like you want to do this and do that. And the third, I understand marketing is one thing, bro, but Conor McGregor do a lot of talking. Mm-hmm. But when it all come down to it, he shows up for events, he make weight in that motherfucker fight. He puts pen to paper. That's it. Um, who else that been doing that do a whole bunch of talking? Um, Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner is another one. You may not like him. You may want to hate him, but you can't say that that motherfucker don't show up and he puts on and, and he handles his business when it's time to do what he got to do. He may not always yeah. win. That motherfucker he never. Be, he may not be prepared, but he coming. He coming. Yeah, you'll be there. So you'll show up for the bag. That's what I'm saying. So that's if he what I'm tell saying, you, like, if you tell you ten mil, if you bring ten mil, he'll he'll walk all his ass out there. Yeah, bro. If the motherfucker tell you he want ten mil and then you bring eight, and if that motherfucker, and if you find somebody, that, that's and he and you find somebody that he really want to fight and really want to beat up, he's showing up, cat. He might work <laughs> with. You. Yeah, so that's some street shit, though. You that's know. some street shit. That's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm talking about, bro. Even though being from the DMV, being all that shit, bro, it's a lot of motherfucking real people from real areas. That don't make you a real motherfucker, bro. Mm-hmm. You just grew up around real motherfuckers. That you know. But if you in a, if you from a, 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 a you know a super solid ass place or whatever, and you still exhibiting whole shit, then you a whole motherfucker. So my judgment of calling him a hoe. It's justified. You know what I'm saying? So, fuck it. Hey. hey, if you stand on it, bro, I'm not going to try to talk you down, man. Yeah, hey, I'm standing on that shit. We bro. all about, hey, it's real real sports, real fans, real talk. Yeah, man, I'm standing yeah. on that shit, bro. I'm standing oh, on that hey. shit, bro. Well, I feel you, doc. Speaking of, speaking of Adrian Broner, too, you know, he fighting. You know, the Espinosa, he had COVID-19. He yeah. came out. I heard that, man. It's coming yeah. back. 2021. Yeah, he coming back. Yeah. They must have came with his 10 mil or he working with them. Mm, that's what I told you. They must have, <laughs> I told you. They must have found somebody that he want that. Hey, I'm telling you. That rap single didn't quite do what he thought it was going to do. I heard yeah. it. Yeah. You heard it? Yeah. He's got to come back to boxing. Boo. has got to come back to boxing. It was boo boo. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. That was. Ooh. Hey, what's the, what's the buddy taking the headphones out? Ooh, and hey, no, man, oh, come man. on, look, man, he, he's still adjusting to rapping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Ooh. but he can fight, so let's let's let him do what he does, man. Let's stop trying to this uh foray into the hip hop scene and yeah, let's get back to boxing, AB. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I liked you, I liked you when you were boxing, win, lose, or draw, buddy. Yeah. I want to say this. Win, lose, or draw, Adrian Broner is somebody to tune in and see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get something. If you don't get it in the ring, you're going to get it in the press conference, before or after, and or either both. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to get something. So, hey, stay with your money maker, dog, and uh, live out your, uh, your hip-hop dreams later. You got plenty of time for that, man. Jay-Z's still Damn rapping. No. He's almost 50. So almost 50. Man, Jay-Z put- every bit of 65, man. Oh, you think he a Cuban? Oh, yeah, he old. Oh, he mm. old, man. I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm. Mm. But look, though, what way he going to come back and fight, though? Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? No, uh, Espinosa said it, it's, it's going to be at 140 pounds. They, okay. They're working out their opponent. So... I think that's AB's best way. If he's not going to one, if he can't get 135 anymore, 140 is his best option. I think that's the most competitive Adrian Broner we're going to see. And, uh, hey, paint on your clown faces, Adrian Broner fans, because I know come 2021, January, you're going to be saying, hey, it's focus Broner. And my nine to eight, six no. times out of 10, you, you guys end up looking like clowns. But this is the year. This is the year he takes over might the sport of boxing. This might be the year that he takes over. This is the year he takes over the sport of boxing. So, JB, we're going to get ahead of the game here, man. Something, you know, I know a lot of people don't follow the lighter weight classes, but this guy was once uh, at the pinnacle of the sport, at the top of the pound for pound list. Mm-hmm. Roman Chocolatino, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. 
Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna go. He's gonna travel to Mexico to finish out his camp. He's been training in Coachella as he has mm-hmm. for quite a few of his last bouts. He's gonna go to, to uh, Mexico to finish out his camp. Uh, he's, he's gonna face Israel Gonzalez on the card, where Juan Francisco Elgado Estrada, the guy who beat the man who beat him for his WBC hey. belt. Uh, Remember it's that. Gonna be, it's going to be fighting against Carlos the Prince Quadros. All right? And that's a big, that's going to be a good card, man. Real good card. Because uh, Chocolatito, he, uh, since losing twice to one, I'm going to pull one of your moves, with Saksu Wenge. Chop him up. Chop him up. Yeah, yeah, he chopped him up. He's won three straight fights. The last fight earned him the WBA World Super Flyweight title. Mm-hmm. So he's a champion again. He's come back, and uh, he's working his way back. And maybe this dual card is setting him up to beat the man who beat the man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Who beat the man Chocol- who beat him. Chocolito, man, he never looked – he haven't looked good in a long time. Not though, bro. But he's winning. Yeah. He's winning again, and styles make fights. So mm. we had to give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he's mm-hmm. only lost those two fights against that fighter. Okay. So uh, got to give him the opportunity to step in there and be the gladiator that he is and uh, that he's shown to be. He's always willing to step in there with the best. So uh, we wish him well, and we look forward to that that fight card. You know what I'm saying? I really do look forward to it. It's going to be a good one on September 15th. Okay. No, 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 sure. no, 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 I lied. I lied. What, when the fight going to be? Yeah. October 23rd. Okay. In Mexico City. Okay. October 23rd, Mexico City. They're going to get it on. It's going to be a good card. Two big super flyweight fights for the guys who like the, the little people. All right. And, you know, Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson, man, he already he already basically preparing for, what's his name, Jamal Herring? Jamal Herring? Yeah. He, mm-hmm. They already preparing for him to vacate his WBO belt, man. So... I'm kind of curious to see which way he go with that, but so you think the Frampton fight's not gonna happen? No, I think the Frampton fight m- might happen, man. I just feel like what what's the what's the incentive for Frampton to fight him if he vacates his belt? That's what I was saying, man. To to be to be real, that's that's what I was like. So when I read the story and when I heard about it, um they said the WBO 130 pound champion Jamel Heron has been in the center of attention of the boxing sphere lately. The 34 year old athlete went through a rocky road, including back to back positive coronavirus tests, fight postponements to finally be able to defend his belt against Jonathan Okendo in early September in Las Vegas. The fight itself turned out to be bittersweet for Heron, who suffered multiple headbutts and cuts over his right eye that blurred his vision until he ultimately decided to stop fighting and awarded us a, a win by disqualification over his Puerto Rican opponent. The thing, the, the, the situation is, is, is that he's having an issue with when him and Frampton is going to actually fight because it says, it says right here, it says, Heron instantly became a target of boxing insiders for his retreat from the fight until he later declared that he suffered a scratched cornea during the fight, as well as old, a old broken bone fracture in his face that needs time to heal. The question is now is that he will fully, when will he fully get recovered and who will be his opponent when his return to the ring? But they say in top rank, it's still, top rank is still chasing the Aaron and Frampton fight. But here's the thing, though. Shakur, that Shakur Stevenson mandatory has to take place before January 2021. We, we discussed that. But, so but what now, I'm telling you is, at the end of the day, 
money will talk. They're gonna pay Shakira Stevenson some money to step aside so that they can make that fight. And then when Frampton eliminates uh, Harry, then you'll see Frampton fight Shakur for no. the belt. Or, or either Mm-mm. Frampton will let the belt go and, and Shakur will fight for a vacant belt. That's what happened, right? They saying that the WBO basically came out and said, all I can tell you at this time is that the WBO will enforce its rules and regulations accordingly. Okay. So, 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 so Harry will drop the belt only if he's guaranteed to frame the fight. Mm-hmm. If not, then he'll have to fight Stevenson. And if he vacates the belt, then Stevenson will fight some. Uh, no, number three. Uber, Uber driver or whoever. Who, who's number no, three? The, uh, the number three ranked uh, Jeremiah Nikita. Nikita Why not Lake? number two? Who's number two? Uh, that doesn't, it don't show, it don't say. So why would he fight number three for the belt? But number three right now is 19-1 and 15 KO. I don't give a fuck. We don't know him. He's still, you know what I'm saying? Like, you not got 19 fights. Mm. You ain't yeah. been to no Olympics. What's your amateur yeah. pedigree? It's a cakewalk. Shakur Stevenson right. will be. WBO champion, top rank yeah. wins again. Yeah, you right about that one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Lomachenko is is sick of uh, Teofimo Lopez's shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he didn't had yeah. enough for that motherfucker. He's had enough for the talk. Told that nigga we gonna prove it in the ring. You feel me? He's tired of you know. Lopez says he's gonna uh, extinguish him. Uh, you he know, called what him, he called him an asshole. He called him a quiet a coward. He yeah. called him a, um, he said that he's a manipulating little bitch. He says oh. he hates being around. Oh, yeah, you didn't see the video? Um, what I'm saying is this, man. He is writing his own ticket. No, he not. Yeah, he is, buddy. You don't, no, he not. You, don't, you don't piss off that little Eastern European, man. That guy is an honorary mean son of a gun. He is going to make him pay. We gonna see. We gonna make him pay. We gonna hey. see, man. We gonna hey, see, man. Hey, hey don't forget, don't pay. forget, don't forget. We got that. We got that PS4 game on the line too. We do. Just let you know, man. Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold Cold War. Just let you know, man. Uh, I even wait. I will wait. You ain't gotta get it for me when it come out, cause I don't want it on PS4. I want the PS5 version. Mm. Let you know, man. Yeah, yeah. you trying to you trying to tax me? No, man, it's the same price. The the, the games is the same well, look, price, man. Look, I look, think. look, 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 look. You got a picture of what I'm gonna look. I will bet you the PS Five, but I told you what I'm gonna give you now. Oh no, I'm not taking that. You're not about oh, the yeah. glue. You're not about the you're not about to tape a PS Two and a PS Three together and make it a PS Five. That's the PS. That's not how it goes, oh, man. That's the ultimate. PS5, no, bro. Nah, all nah. that power together, man. You got to That's really a PS7 if you look right. at it. No, man. No, man. That's not how it go, brother. Mm. Please. Nah, I want the take Call of Duty branch. <laughs> no, bro. I'm cool on that. I'm cool on that. Man. Oh, so you want the you want Call of Duty? I want the Black Ops. I want the Black Ops Cold War, man. The man, shit looked look, out. Some, some new shit gonna be out by the end, bro. Give me the same thing, then. Well, you, you was trying to put me on call. We betting Call of Duty, then. Betting Call of Duty. Betting call- Wait, hold on. Let did. me see when the fight. Let me see when the fight. The fight is on 10-17, okay? And the PS5 come out on November 12th. So I'll wait a month. I wait a month for mine. See, I know Because I already know Lopez is gonna beat the brakes off of him. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey. I already know that. Have my Call of Duty ready for me. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I already know they said, well, if you buy the new games, they're going to automatically give you the game for the PS5. Well, you know that's, that? only, that's only for certain games. I know Madden is doing that for free. But, yeah. NBA, but look, NBA 2K, you have to spend, you have to spend $100 to be able to get the PS5 version. 
whatever, you give me the version that I can get on both. Oh, That's no. The deal, nigga. <laughs> That's the deal. That's the deal. Oh, no. I'll do you the same way. I'll do you the okay. same way. All right. All right. That's fine. Way. That's fine. We could do that. We could do that. We could do that. All right, bro. I ain't think about that. But yeah, we could go that route. Uh, how about you just get me the how about you just get me the PS5 version and then cash at me the difference? It don't work that way. Yeah, bad it shit. That way. No, no, no. It don't work that way. Because the the, the, the PS5 version is Sixty dollars. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I think. I think. I gotta look and see. We'll we'll talk about that later on. I ain't tripping. Man. Yeah, yeah. I get forty forty dollars. I spent more than that on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Errol Spence has confirmed what we already knew to be true. Jamel Charlo is going to try to dominate and knock this dude out. This dude being Rosario. Uh. JB, it's pretty much his plan going into every fight, man. He, yeah. he goes out there to dominate. He goes out there to do his thing. And that's why we love to watch Jamel Charlo. Yeah. I told you that, though, man. Like, he, he got a plan. He, uh, from what I'm hearing, he looking good in camp. Um, from what, I, from what I've been reading and just been hearing about him, that boy's about to put on the show. But, uh, and I, I think, like I said, that's so why I said Rosario don't seem like the opponent to really give him too much. But I'm gonna look at you now. Errol Spence himself does not count Rosario out. Twenty uh, says Rosario is a big fighter. He's not small. He finally gets to go to training camp and prepare for for fights right instead of just taking a fight or jumping in a fight in four or five weeks to notice. He's mm-hmm. finally got a ten week or a twelve week training camp. Says that he watched his virtual press conference and he's got some swagger. He's wearing the designer shades. <laughs> the hmm. hunger is different, especially after his signature win. So I feel like he's going to come with it. And with Jamel, he just feels like Charlo. They always feel like they got something to prove and they feel like they're going to knock you out. They feel like everyone is against them. With them, they have a chip on their shoulder. They always have to prove something. Mm. Hey, truer words were never spoken. He has really psychoanalyzed Jamel Charlo to a T. Yeah. Uh, but but Rosario, uh, being 21 and 1 with 14 KOs, 25 years of age, the man is going to be a stiff tit. It's going to be a great fight. That in the addition of his brother, Jamal, going against Devin Chinko, that card, man, is really a sleeping giant. Hey, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You really need to make sure you tune in to that because Devin Chinko says he's going to apply pressure early and start fast on Charlie. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to see about now, that one. That, hey. That play really plays right into Jamal's hands. He has a problem. Unlike Jamel, he's not his best when he's hunting you. He's better when he's fighting a guy who's aggressive. And he's a better counterpuncher. Mm-hmm. And I think he he can get his stuff off with a guy who's open in that. Had to be hit. What you think about that? Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. So, I mean, it just, it, I just, I just think nobody fucking with them boys, man. I, regardless of who in front of them and what's going on, man. I just think them Charlo uh, boys is, I them Charlo boys. Regardless of, regardless of who's in front of them. Yeah. You can't say what you about to call the Tony Harrison win. Or how he looked against uh that's one Cole Ball. Oh, so. Yeah, Cole Ball. I'm I'm thinking about yeah. the big the big Charlo against Cole Ball. Yeah, he, but either one, that's what I'm saying though. Like either them boys look good, they just had some situations, he but he didn't look good. He didn't look good at all. I yeah. think he did. He I think he did. Everybody everybody expected Baby. him to smoke. Baby, you Cole got balls. your you got your Man. Houston, Texas glasses on right now. If you nah, say he looked good in that fight. Everybody was expecting him to come out and smoke Matt 
but yeah, he didn't look good. But Matt was just he Matt was there to get beat on all night. Man, you know what I'm saying? Hit him. Yeah, I mean, but if you in a fight, you're gonna get hit, man. That's just how this shit go. Hey man, you Jamal Charlo, you talking about Canelo Alvarez. You don't let Matt Corball make you look like that. But if people forget though, man, Matt Pope, the boy got a lot of skills though, bro. He's got a lot of heart. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I'm about to pull up something for you real quick. And I'm about to let pull you it know. up. This will kind because of because Matt Corbov, if Matt Corbov got in the ring with Can if the zone approved Matt Corbov for Canelo Alvarez, he'd be seeing stars by round five. No. Yes. No. We talking about we talking about the Rolex Matt. wearing. No. No. Mexicano Tesla driving. Nah, man. This boy won a gold medal. Stealing, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun. Bro, this boy. And he's having a hard time keeping his alligators down. Canelo Alvarez, man. Bro, this boy got three. This boy got three gold medals, bro. I don't give a fuck. This is professional boxing. And what have you done for me lately? Give me his professional resume. Bro, Give his, it professional, to his professional resume right now is 27, well, 28 and 3. 14 by KO, one draw. Total fights 31. 32. Who I mean, so the fuck has he beat? Okay. He lost against Chris Eubank. He beat Jonathan Batista. Uh, Chris Eubank is an average middleweight at best. If his daddy wasn't Chris Eubank Sr., we wouldn't even be talking about it. Go ahead. He, he beat Brian Vera. And if Chris Eubank didn't beat up them dudes in a street fight, he really wouldn't be shit. He lost to who? Brian Vera? That's he a beat, fucking contender. He beat, he beat Brian Vera. He a beat, fucking contender. Oscar De La Hoya didn't even want that motherfucker. He beat, he beat Benjamin Diaz. Who? He beat Lamar Harris. My fucking he beat, neighbor. He beat Joshua Snyder. What? The he IT beat, guy? He beat Michael Walker. Michael Walker, the nigga in TLR. He beat Milton. The defensive back. Oh, man. For the I'm Utah saying. Utes. He beat Ozzy Duran. Ozzy, what? The fuck? A Ozzie rock Durant. star? He beat Grady Brewer. Grady? That he motherfucker. Beat. He beat, he beat up old man. He beat them all, man. He beat who Ed, the look, fuck look, look, are they? Go look, ahead, bro. I'm telling you, man. He beat. Look. Oh bro. my God, JB, you're not making a case for this guy. You're Just really saying, burying man. him. You're Just burying saying, him. Just There's saying, no man. way this guy was supposed to be held up by Jamal Charlo for twelve fucking rounds. I mean, Mel, no look, look. way. Mal, Mal, Mal needed the rounds. Mal, Mal needed don't the put rounds. that smut. Don't put that smut on Mel's name. Ma needed, needed the rounds. Ma needed the rounds, though. No, yeah, he, he didn't. He didn't need that at that time, rounds. man. He, he was in line. Rounds. If he would have handled that guy expeditiously, in the words mm -hmm. of Clifford Harris, he would be fighting Canelo Alvarez. No, it wasn't. Canelo wouldn't have fought him. Oh, no. You can't say that. Canelo wouldn't have fought him. You are lying. Canelo. Well, Canelo wait, we're going to see. Because the WBC or somebody is talking about they going to mandate that thing. They're talking about mandating, uh, what is the W, what's the it's one with the, the baby somebody. Hey, I don't know. It's so many god doggone. They about to have a person body. dead. Somebody's about to make him fight them, man. You going to see. Oh, no, no, no. It's the WBC. No, no, no. It's the WBC uh, 168 title. That shit about to be, uh, they about to have a purse bid for that bullshit. Uh, it, look, it can't, it can't be uh, mauled, and he ain't even fighting at 168. But I heard somewhere, mm -hmm. Charlo was going to oh. The year drum fight. I'm talking about. I ain't uh, talking about that. I'm talking about Canelo well, that's still what, got Canelo still got middleweight belt. But that's what he's talking about going do. They talking about the first big gonna be on the fourth of October. You're not hearing. You, you, you listening to me? But you're not so, hearing. That hold Canelo. On, hold, on, Can hold on. I'm gonna look this shit up. Talk yeah. Canelo not trying to do that shit. Mm -mm. But it's being forced. That's what I'm telling you. Don't make me talk about. 
how Charlo already rejected lucrative offers to fight Canelo. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't know that shit. You didn't fucking know it. Didn't know that shit there. Man, they brought the man a, 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 a lucrative offer to fight Canelo. And he turned it down. What in the world? Now, De La Hoya, De La Hoya wouldn't like exactly reveal all the terms, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. the offer was there. So if if Charlo really felt like he could do the damn thing, mm -hmm. he should have made the fight happen. Mm -hmm. All right, see, there's a video by Dante's Boxing Nation. Mm -hmm. the, the, the title is Bad News for Canelo. WBC president wants Canelo versus Jamal Charlo fight. So apparently the WBC is going to try to enforce that fight on to Canelo. Now Dante's Boxing Nation thinks it's bad news for Canelo. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. it's the other way around, my buddy, my brother. Because as we know, or as you may not know, mm -hmm. Canelo and Oscar De La Hoya already made a lucrative offer to Charlo one time to fight. Okay, I didn't know that. He turned it down. Yeah, he turned it down. Now we don't know the specifics, but an offer was made. And if somebody makes you an offer, if you really want to fight, you do what? Negotiate. Yeah, you're right. At least some, some negotiation that goes on. You don't just turn down the first offer. Mm -hmm. Right? You send a counter offer that, that was not done. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? If I offer you a piece of bread and you want two, you're not going to ask me for the other piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and then you didn't want to eat. You're right about that. All right. So, hey, man, that's all I got to say about that. Okay. Well, I got to do a little bit more research on that shit, but I ain't know that, man. So I got to, mm. I got to figure it yeah. out. I'm here for you, man. I'm here for you. I'm here for you and the people, you know, I just want to bring, I just want to bring unbiased, factual things to the table so we can discuss them. You know what I'm saying? I don't have all the answers. I want to, I want a forum. You know what I'm saying? I want the people watching at home, comment. Give us your thoughts. What do you think is going on about what we talking about? Let us know. Click the like button. Subscribe. Share. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe to the podcast on uh, whatever whatever platform that you are viewing it or listening to it. And uh, hey, if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure to leave a review. You know what I'm saying? Rate us. Let us know. What can we improve? We here for you. Yeah. Man, let's go on the MMA news. Yeah. I'm very... Oh. I, I, I want to say something ah. before you get started. I know MMA is your bag. It's what you... Yeah. You're the expert. But I want to say this. As a black man, uh, we were very disappointed on Saturday night. Yeah, man. Very yeah, man. disappointed. Uh, Kobe Covington got to talk his shit. He got to pop his shit. And he went all the way as far as insulting LeBron James. Yeah, he don't do no shit like that. Like he, he insulted the king, and uh, but the king fired back. You know what I'm saying? He did. Yeah, the king told him. Yeah, hey, everybody, everybody can talk. He, the king act like he really want to see. He will fight it. Like he what? Was smoke. Yeah, the king said. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can talk until they step into their ring or arena. So I guess saying. Really, Kobe Covington, you can't do what I do because I think Kobe Covington called him a coward. Bro. Yeah, he called him a spine. He called him a yeah, spine. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you can't really basically told him you can't do what I do. And uh, you really probably don't want to step in here against a 6 8 beast like myself mm, yeah. in, any, in any arena. You feel yeah. me? 
I put my money on LeBron James because you know what? He's built different. Mm. He's built different. I got LeBron James by rear naked choke. Shit, I probably got LeBron James by a fucking bloody murder fucking knockout. By Donkey Kong smash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, because... Bro, that motherfucker towering over that dude, man. I, but uh, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm going to get off of it. Real, I'm just going to be real tight about this one. Just get it out the way. Kobe Covington was for the, the Trumpsters. You know, he, he's claimed by the Trumpsters. <laughs> This is Something not me. for Trump. Something yeah, and it's not, and it's not us supporting one way or another in the fight just because. Oh, you know, Tyrone Woodley was supporting Black Lives Matter, and uh, Tyrone Woodley was washed up. Yeah, and we're not talking about mm-hmm. that shit. Basically, you had a fighter who has embraced a base and embraced a segment of his fan base that spends a lot of money with him. You know what I'm saying? They buys his fights. They pays attention to his fights. They pays attention to him and they buy his merch. So when somebody is so thirsty to get on top, like he is, you know, he willing to say any and everything to do it. A lot of people compare him to Conor McGregor, but he's not a Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor had a lot more. He had when he was fighting. He's he, I'm gonna speak to. I'm gonna speak in past tense because he is retired. Conor McGregor had a lot of more. Had a lot more class about what he did. He had a lot more. He had a lot more of a backbone about what he did when he did it, what he said, and how he went about his business. He didn't cater to a certain segment of people just because they was putting him on. He did it to his home. His 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 home, but he didn't. He didn't he push an about- agenda. Specifically, who he was, his opponent was. Yeah, he talked noise to who he was fighting and what they were about. He didn't generalize it or, or make it racial, bro. He the boy said in the press conference. Uh, Kobe Covington said in the press conference in that that Tyron Woodley supports evil. That this country will go down to the dumps if they defund the police. If they um. What else he said that that he's a communist? He called him all kind of shit, bro. And I think I like I was I enjoyed some of the, you know, some of the reporters' questions toward him because man, you can't say statements like that about somebody and not get no pushback, bro. And they was pushing back. They was giving him opportunities to clear his mind, and, you know, clear clear up some shit. But Kobe Covington didn't earn no new fans for one. He 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 emboldened some of the uh, some of the other fans. I'm not saying that he wrong for having a political stance one way or the other, but I just feel like when you start putting certain labels on certain people, like I understand every white person not racist, right? You know, and and I want to believe that every white person believe that every black person is not a fucking thug or or, or, or you know a racist slur. You know what I'm saying? Or a stereotype, right? But for him to get up there and say some of the shit he was saying. Just let me know that that racist shit, that racist shit goes well past, you know, the older generation dying off and shit like that, bro. Take a, I want to take a uh because he was saying some wild shit, bro. I want to take Wait, a line from I want to take a line from Dave Chappelle. You know. Now, when I every white person is not racist, that is true. I say I want to believe that. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I it it it's a fact because many yeah. many many Caucasian people were out there marching with us and uh, fighting for justice, all that. And then they have even since the '60s. Yeah, there's always been some 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 allies. Yeah, but it, but but if you're white, you may not be racist, but you're wearing a racist uniform. Yeah, so that would, that's my point. I gotta see. I gotta see what what team you play for. Yeah. Before you know what I'm saying. Before I can, you know. Hey, that's my whole point. That's my whole point, right. bro. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I don't want to get too much into it because we are we're a sports show. We're talking about MMA and boxing, but Kobe Covington brought he made it this way. 
Yeah, this you the storyline of the fight. This like, fuck, yeah, fuck, he, fuck the fight. This was yeah, the storyline for the event for the whole week. He brought this to the forefront, mm-hmm. and this is how he makes his money. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't even be relevant. But go ahead. But on top of that, on top of that too, to say that it'll be unfair to us if we don't talk about it and speak about it because that storyline has carried carried all weekend long, lead up to the fight. That was the storyline. After the fight, all of the supporters is telling Tyron Woodley to go back to Africa. See, see, people don't want to talk about that shit. See, that's the shit that bothers me, dog. Like that shit, it, it really fucks me up because and it irritates the shit out of me, dude. Because I'm one of them, I'm one of them kind of guys. Hey, Tyrone Woodley should probably go home. But he's yeah, not but America. no, man. He he been, he put out a statement, right? Yeah. Because he mean, put out a we were we, we were taken from Africa a long, long time ago. Tyrone Woodley's probably never been to Africa. Uh thanks to some of uh Kobe Covington's ancestor. So uh, we wish that we could go back to Africa. Yeah, he made a statement, bro. And I wanna, I wanna get, I wanna be yeah. clear about but, it. He's, but we're disconnected from Africa thanks to uh, some uh, unforeseen circumstances that were out of our control. Mm. So uh, anytime you tell a black person to go back to Africa, man, we wish we could. You yeah. feel me? That's not an insult. If you think it's an insult, then you're fucked up because uh, you came from Africa. Everybody came from Africa. If you want to be real about it. Mm-hmm. But that's another story for another day. And uh, I want to get to Usman putting the smack down on him again because he's barking up that tree one more time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's going to happen, man. But before he even gets to him, he gonna have to fight Jose Jorge uh, Masvidal. That's the fight oh. that everybody wanna see. So we got a battle of the Trumpsters. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's gonna be epic. Yeah, that's, that's gonna, gonna, gonna be the fight, be man. That's gonna be the fight, bro. That's they'll the fight. That... They'll probably get together and uh, who knows how that goes. I don't really care. We'll see. Well, the winner. Yeah, it gets to get beat. Yeah, and that's the fight. That's the fight that uh people want to see. They don't want to see a rematch between Masvidal and Diaz and all that shit that they talking about. Nobody want to see that. I know I don't want to see it. I want to see Masvidal and Covington get it on. Or I want to see him fight. Um, I want to see him go straight to Usman. I doubt it, but that's... Basically, would, what's going I, on? I, I wouldn't mind if Covington beat Mads, but all right, I want I want Covington to get whooped. Oh, okay, man. outside of outside of the statement that cut that uh Tyron Woodley said about his rib being popped out, you know, he said he was in the most pain ever. I don't really want to elaborate on that. Y'all can go to Aaron Hawaiian Twitter page and see that. But Tyron Woodley made a statement about his future and about you know, addressing some of the fans and addressing some of the shit that's going on around that storyline. He said, I'm not retiring. I'm not giving it up. I'm not switching all my coaches up. I'm not changing the continent I live on. I'm not doing none of that shit. You shouldn't change the continent you live on, but you should retire. Yeah. After one yeah. more fight against a soft touch, you have a farewell fight. Get out of there. Man. Yeah. I hope you, yeah. hope you did well with your cash. Uh, I mean, he make he make money though, bro. I mean, you know, he was in the end. You, you, you don't deserve. You don't deserve it, bro. You know, he made an appearance in the NWA movie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he uh, I think he game. got some. Ca- I think he, he got some probably, cash saved up, man. He should probably look to do more Hollywood things. He, he could he could probably you know get into uh, like Michael J. White or something. Maybe yeah. become like a star like that. Do something like that. Yeah, like, it's a brutal game. It's a young man's game. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, long story short, the welterweight division in the UFC just heated back up. It was already kind of heated up. Nobody knew what Kobe Covington was gonna bring to the table again, um, but he bounced back pretty good. We all seen the Usman and Masvidal fight didn't go as we thought it was gonna go, and like I say, you still have some names out there that need to get it on. So 
they, the division heated up. UFC was hot this weekend, and it's they going they riding the wave because it was a lot of um, it was a lot of heat coming off of this event, especially with the BLM stuff and uh, Make America Great shit and did, everything did else anybody, in between. Did anybody on the undercard garner any? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, you had one fighter. He he, but I think he undefeated. I can't pronounce his name fully, so I'm not even going to even chop it up, man. You can't just, pronounce anybody's name. Go, yeah, go man. It. It, it starts with a fucking K. It's Kamafi of Shiziff. K guy. The K. Oh, he, yeah, the K guy, man. He came out with a seven. He came out and scored a 17 second knockout. One point. Can you tell, me his, can you tell me his weight class? Uh, no, can't tell you that either. Uh, let me go Jesus ahead and Google that real Christ. quick. Hold Jesus on a second. Right. So you don't uh, know, you don't know the guy's name. I like I like looking at new yeah, fighters, man. Yeah, I just I know you do, but look, you you must have been like deep into the ring. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't when you, when, when the fight was on. But 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 this guy this guy that I just chopped up his name that guy right yeah. there he fought he fought i think he done fought like twice three times this year so far he's, he's so putting it, in work he might yeah. be a fighter to watch yeah well, i'm trying to think, think no he me. might be a fighter to watch hold on let me see something real quick hold on real quick well look while you see that let me remind everybody like subscribe share the video share the podcast tell your friends about it the Her Business Podcast with JB and CP. We're here twice a week, every week. We're giving you what you want. You know, the good bots and talk. Strong content. Uh, the down home feel. You know, we're not sugarcoating anything. We give you our honest opinions. We're not political with it. You know, in terms of we don't have any affiliations with any promotional company. So we're going to give everybody the business when they deserve it. And we're going to give people props when it calls for it. So, hey, we you guys for honest, unbiased opinion. And we're not going to sell out just for an interview. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a middleweight fight. Oh, hey. He's, he was a middleweight. Yeah, he was a middleweight. Came out first round, one punch, dropped him 17 seconds out of there. That guy, every time Dana, every time he win, he always say, you know, Dana White, put me back on the card, put me back on the card. And this motherfucker been fighting, bro. Like, he been fighting a lot. They lining him up with Damian Maya, probably. I tell you what you do. I tell you what you do, JB. You get his bio. You get all the background info on him. And uh, on Friday's episode, we need we need a full rundown on that guy. I got to do a little and bit. And I need you, on. you know what I need you to do? First and foremost, I need for you to, like, look up the pronunciation of his name. Yeah, get I will, man. Together, like, you know what I'm saying? Get that together and really give us the rundown on this cat. I got to do a little bit of digging, man. I'm going to tell you, it seems like you just told me, I just heard a little, 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 little blurb mm -hmm. on it. But he seems like he might be the type of guy that can get to the top of this this UFC thing straight in the middleweight division. Who he got? Who, who, who's who's the champion in middleweight right now? Uh, shit. Um, Israel Adesanya. Okay, that might be. And a they stretch. fighting. This, they fighting this weekend. Yeah, that might that might be a stretch. But let's just say. But he said, "Hold up!" But Adesanya is gonna move up at some point. Yeah, but he also said too that he'll knock out Israel Adesanya. He'll go up and knock out. I mean, he'll yeah, beat up yeah. Israel Adesanya, and he'll go down in weight and beat up yeah. Usman. So Tia Fimo Lopez said he's gonna knock out Lomachenko too. So hey, I'm hey, not man. giving hey, a damn man. about hey, what man. nobody say. Uh, you got to show me. So, but yeah. but look up that cat, man. Hey, get everything on him Friday. I want to know the I want to know the deets. I need the details, and uh, the people want to know because we for need sure. to know. We need to know what's coming up. For sure, for sure. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a fire fighter in boxing for the fighter to watch on Friday. Okay. You gotta okay. tie. You gotta tie me. You need to come with it. Uh, 
Let us know something, man. Put us on some game. Got you. I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. Well, shit, we about to go ahead and wrap it up. Because, you know, the Saints about to come on. So, wrap that shit up, B. You already know. Once again, it's been a pleasure to bring you to Her Business Podcast. I'm CP. I'm JB, man. Y'all be good. Catch, catch y'all Friday. Much love. Peace.